As good as they are, I don't buy Nanmo models because they have a very Jurassic Park-esque aesthetic and I limit myself to scientifically accurate figures because I simply don't have the space. However, Nanmo Studios has in the past done some non-Jurassic Park models and I'm delighted to show you one of them that's been a bit of a holy grail of mine. A few years ago, I saw a picture of this wonderful diorama. I loved it because I love sauropods, and as I enter into my twilight, I increasingly prefer depictions of animals in a more natural state, away from the fighting and the killing, minding their own business, like walking, being asleep, and especially scenes of family. Well, this beautiful set is the Shunosaurus family from Nanmo Studios. I don't do unboxings because in addition to reviewing figures, I like sharing about the dinosaurs themselves, and including unboxings would make the videos unforgivably long. Second, I like the idea of leaving a bit out, so that for those of you who do get the figures, there'll still be a bit of a surprise. But since most of you are not very likely to have this, I wanted to show you the packaging, just like I did with the Vitae Teratophonius. One thing I really salute these Chinese companies for is they really make an effort to elevate their offerings by designing more premium looking packages. So you feel like you're getting something really special. We're of course familiar with the elegant white boxes that PNSO uses. Here, you see also a predominantly white box that looks very elegant as well. I especially like the Nanmu Studios wax seal. Fortunately, this is a fake seal and I don't have to break it to open the box. Inside the box, you'll see foam inserts that hold the component pieces of this diorama. An adult Shunosaurus. A baby Shunosaurus. A crocodile. And the base. I do have another Shunosaurus, this little guy, but it's nice to have a larger model. Interestingly, the leg posture is almost exactly the same as the Nanmu. The length of this Chinese dinosaur has been estimated to be between 9 to 11 meters, which is 30 to 36 feet. And this model is 33 centimeters measured along the curve, making it 1 to 27 to 1 to 33 scale. The declared scale is 1 to 35. And just in case you're curious, the baby measures about 11 centimeters, which is about 4.3 inches. And the crocodile along the curve is about 13 centimeters or 5.1 inches. Now let's look at the adult Shunosaurus. There are actually relatively few papers on Shunosaurus, even though we have more than 20 specimens, complete and near complete, adults and juveniles, resulting in 94% of all its skeletal elements known. Frustratingly, it seems that this one key paper can't be found for love or money so I won't be able to talk about accuracy as much as I'd like to. The head's a little shrink-wrapped, especially in the external naris. As you can see in this restoration from Chatterjee and Zheng, it's appropriately bulbous, though I think the tip slopes down too sharply. The orbit could also be more triangular in shape. 
Otherwise, with respect to the mandible, including the uh, slight downturn here, I think it agrees quite well. From the top, however, the head is too broad and blunt, even accounting for flashing out. In terms of the detail, you can see how fine it is. The wrinkle lines around the lips and just the head in general is quite common in sauropod models. But in addition, you'll also see scales, for example, in the skin overlying the naris. And outlining the orbital ring. And as we go down the animal, we'll see additional details. Here's a line of muscle separation in the neck. And on the back, you see understated feature scales up here, not crying out for attention, but which rewards careful scrutiny. Moving down, you'll see outright scutes, overlying the scapular coracoid area and the flank. Down the arm, you'll see how increasingly fine that wrinkling becomes. Really like the elbow creases. Turning to the front, just look at the detail in the neck, how fine it is. Here, there seems to be a discontinuity of skin. which isn't present on the other side. So, it could be a scar from a past injury. And if it's not my imagination, then the artist has shown great care and attention to detail that makes this a real individual, not just a template dinosaur. And I like that. You'll also see some of these veins down the neck, the sides of the animal, the tail. You've doubtless also noticed the beautiful paintwork. This dinosaur is countershaded, but the difference between dark and light is not very contrasting. Dorsally, you'll see a very nice blend of wood and umber colour. And eventually, a mix of perhaps light khaki and beige. So again, going down, look at all the fine detail. Hey, okay. The skin creases and folds in a very natural way. Down to the feet, the hand has that single thumb claw, painted very nicely. And the underside reveals the inclusion of a fatty foot pad, obscuring the horseshoe-shaped arrangement of metacarpals. And on the foot, you see here too the claws are very nicely painted. Going down the tail, just look at the fineness of the sculpting. And the colour starts to transition more towards a rust brown. And of course, that famous tail club. Now, this is one thing that's always puzzled me. You see, it's very common that reconstructions have spiky osteoderms on the Shunosaurus tail club. Well, thanks to Dr. Mike Taylor, who sent me the near impossible to find Tsang 1988 paper, I find here indeed a photograph and reconstruction that includes spikes. If I understand the paper correctly, there was one large osteoderm that the author suggested might be one of a pair, another two that definitely formed a pair, and one at the back. So in all, four definite osteoderms, possibly five. This safari model seems to be reproducing what you can see directly from the side, while the Nanwu seems to be following the Tsang paper with four osteoderms. 
And yet a year later, in a paper by Tong et al. in 1989, which talks specifically about the Shunosaurus tail club, you can see there are no spikes at all. In fact, that paper explicitly states that unlike ankylosaur tail clubs that comprise of dermal plates, which fused to the tail vertebrae, sauropod tail clubs are formed directly from the tail vertebrae and have no dermal material. So I'll just leave it at that. Now as to the baby. This little fellow has smaller proportions but is no less detailed. You'll see here skin texture very much like the adult, but on a much finer level. It has that baby large head. I just love the smiley mouth here. And you can see how precisely painted the eyes are with a lifelike shine. The tail club hasn't grown into its own yet and is barely an expansion of the tail tip. The colour is very different from the adult, which isn't really uncommon with many babies differing in colour from the adult, for example due to the need to camouflage in different surrounds. The red colour in the tail is very much brighter than in the adult. Just another quick look. So, so detailed and so fine and delicately done. Now the crocodile. I'm afraid I'm totally clueless when it comes to crocodilomorphs, so I can't comment intelligently as to form and accuracy. In fact, I don't even know what genus this is. But I think it's obvious that in terms of detail of skew and scale, the coloration, the application of the fades on the sides, the hands into the claws here, the transition in the side of the face, and then the bending on the tail, and over all that, a kind of gloss applied over the skin, catching the light at different angles, looking very much like wet hide. And underneath, look at that exquisite detail, with even the tinier scale appearing to be individually carved. It's all masterfully done, and at such a small scale. Now, let me show you just how small. If you have this Collecte Sitakosaurus, the only one nitpick is the very obvious flattening of the underside. But in totality, this is a crocodile that looks great even as a standalone miniature. And finally, the base, which in this diorama has the very important role of tying everything together. It's rather dark and drab, although the texturing is very nice uh, for the mud. With footprints where the adult Shunosaurus feet will go. Exposed roots. and this resin-like creation of a stream. Just take in all that detail. Oh, 
on the other side, you'll see it says 87, though out of how many, I don't know. As you can see, it comes with these three sachets of various vegetation, two of which look like shrubbery, and one red toadstool. Unfortunately, there isn't any one spot to secure these, so the wind might blow them off. But the good thing is you just sprinkle according to your taste. And you should hopefully be able to rest this toadstool somewhere in a convincing way. So let's put everything together. And here, you can see the finished base. And the vegetation really adds a much needed splash of colour to an otherwise dark coloured base. It looks rather like a nice cottage garden. And when you put everything together, I'm sure you can see how everything ties in together so nicely. The scene of a Shunosaurus family arriving at some watering hole, disturbing a crocodile who decides that discretion is the better part of valour. The only thing I wish was that the adult Shunosaurus was a lighter colour to separate it better from the base. But overall, this is a very nice diorama to have depicting a scene you might have seen if you were back in China about 160 million years ago. Truly a beautiful piece by Nanwu, and one which makes me wish they'd do more non-Jurassic Parkes figures from time to time. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at a very wonderful diorama. Have a great weekend and I'll hopefully see you soon with another video.